Welcome. Today's video is discussing how to solve algebraic equations. Notice the balance in the middle of this diagram. The balance has a 5 kilogram block on the left side <clears throat> as well as a 5 kilogram block on the right side. What will happen to the balance if I add 2 kilograms to the left side? Think about that. What would happen if I add 2 kilograms to the left side? The balance is going to look like that, isn't it? How do you make the balance even again with the additional weight? Well, you're going to want to add that same 2 kilogram block to the right side. So as you see, in order to maintain this equality or this balance between the left side and the right side, anything I do to this side, I have to also do to this side. Consider, say I multiply the left side, so I add a whole nother, so I multiply by two. So in other words, I add an entirely new five kilogram block and an entirely new two kilogram block. Well, in order for that to be equal to the other side, I have to also multiply by 2 over here so that I would have another 5 kilogram block and another 2 kilogram block. I could also divide by 2 on the right side, but if I do that, then I need to cross that one out as well. All right, so moving right along, we'll solve some one-step equations. Remember, the entire time the balance between the left side and the right side. So for the first one here, we have 3v equals 9. Well, in order to get solve for v, which is what our goal is in solving an algebraic equation, we want to solve for the variable, we're going to have to divide this by 3 so that these cancel. But if I do that, this balance is going to rock in this on this side. So in order to make sure that doesn't happen, I divide the right side by 3 as well. Saying that, nine divided by, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So v equals 3. Well, let's check that. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. So you substitute v, 3, for v, and you get 3 times 3 equals 9. Is that true? Yes. All right, for the next one. Again, we're trying to solve for b, and if we divide this side by 2, we're going to have this balance rock in this favor here. So in order to make sure that doesn't happen, you divide the right side by 2 as well. These cancel, this turns to 6, and we get b is equal to 6. Does that make sense? 2 times 6 equals 12. Well, that's true. Next one, 4r equals 16. You notice each time we're trying to get the variable by itself. So in this case, we have to divide each side by 4. And we get these cross cancel out, and um, 16 divided by 4 is 4. Now, does that make sense? 4 times 4 is 16. Yes, that's true. Notice in each one of those, instead of dividing by 3, or dividing by 2, or dividing by 4, I could have multiplied by 1 third, because 1 third would have also canceled it and one-third here is really the same thing. Just something to keep in mind because we might use that example through later problems or that method. All right, so for the last one here, we have one-third s divided by th is equal to three. So yeah, I could still divide by three or I can multiply or divide by one-third on each side or I can multiply by three on each side because really make this look a little bit neater. You have one-third s equals three. So if I want the s by itself, let's just say this in this example, I multiply by 3. These 3's cancel, leaving 1s is equal to 3 times 3, which is 9. So s equals 9. Does that make sense? We'll plug in 9 for s. 9 times 1 third is 3. Yes, that's true. All right, for the next ones. In these ones, the uh, one step involves adding or subtracting a number from each side of the equation to g isolate your variable. When I say isolate your variable, what I mean is I want one of the variables, so one of them is equal to whatever else. It's isolating it down to itself. 
So for this one, the only way to get, or the, uh, what you want to do to get x by itself is you want to subtract 2 from each side. Notice I can't just subtract 2 from here because that balance would once again rock. So in order to keep this balance nice and even between each side of the equation, I have to do it to the right side as well. Plus 2 minus 2 is 0. No sense in writing it. 3 minus 2 is 1. x equals 1. Does that make sense though? Let's check it. Plug it in. 1 plus 2 is 3. Is that true? Well, yes it is. So for this one, we're going to subtract 1 from each side. x is now by itself. 3 minus 1 is 2. Plug it in to see if you're right. 2 plus 1 equals 3. Well, yes, that's true. x plus 7 equals 11. What do you do here? Yeah, you subtract 7 from each side leaving you with 11 minus 7, which is 4. Just plug it in to see if we're right. 4 plus 7 equals 11. It's true. x plus 54 equals 77. Subtract 54 from each side. Just because they're bigger numbers doesn't mean it's a harder problem. It's the same problem. You just It's the same step. So anyway, these cancel out to 0. 77 minus 54 is 23. And see if your answer makes sense. Plug it in. 23 plus 54 is 77. 3 plus 4 is 7. 5 plus 2 is 7. It's true. So you're correct. X is 23. For this last row, you have to, once again, isolate the variable. And some negatives were thrown in here just, to, uh, just so you see them. So for the first one, if I want to get R isolated on the left hand of the equation, I need to add 1 to each side so that it cancels out this one. And 2 plus 1 is 3. So r equals 3. Well, 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 equals 2? Well, yes, it does. Here, the one-step equation is actually making this negative r positive because we're trying to solve for positive 1 of the variable. So, to do that, there's a couple ways. You could divide by negative 1, or you can multiply by negative 1. It doesn't really matter as long as you flip the signs. So, we'll just multiply each side by negative 1. A negative times a negative is a positive, so we're left with r there. And 11 times negative 1 is negative 11. So, negative, negative 11, or positive 11 is equal to 11. Yes. All right r over 9 equals 2. So it looks like this. Now, <clears throat> in order to get this 9 out of the picture so we're left with something that looks like this, we have to multiply each side by 9. Notice that 9 is really 9 over 1, so when we multiply them together, those 9's cancel. We're left with r is equal to 2 times 9, or 18. Check our answer, plug it in. 18 divided by 9 is 2. Well, yeah, that's true. The last one, we have r minus 44 equals 33. To determine r, all you have to do is add that 44. But remember, you can't just do it to the left side because that balance would rock in favor of one side or the other. And you'd change it. It would be different. So, you add the 44 to each side. And you obtain r is equal to 77. Well, does that make sense? Plug it in. 77 minus 44 equals 33. 33 equals 33. And that's true. Alright, so we have about five minutes left in this video. Go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can solve these two-step equations. Alright, now I'm going to tear through these pretty quickly, but I'll have another video out on solving equations so you can get more familiarity with it. First, you want to get the variable on the left hand side with all its junk. So if it has a one fourth in front of it, just get one fourth equals whatever. And then, so that's going to be the first step. So what does that mean? Well, first, for this first problem, we're going to just subtract four from each side. And we'll get 2x equals 16. Now what do we do? Yes, we either multiply by one half on each side or divide by 2. Each one is this, it's the same operation regardless. 
2 divided by 2 is 1, 16 divided by 2 is 8, x equals 8. Let's see if we're right. 8 times 2 is 16, 16 plus 4 is 20. I'm going to let you do that last step, plugging it back in on your own, as we only have a few more minutes left of this video, and I'd like to get all these problems solved. Alright, next problem. 1 fourth v plus 1 equals 17. So first, we'll subtract the 1 from each side. We'll get 1 fourth v is equal to 16. Then, we'll multiply 4 by each side, because this is really 4 over 1. Those will cancel to 1, and we are left with 16 times 4, which is 64. 64 divided by 4 is 16. 16 plus 1 is 17. 10x minus 10 equals 90. What do we do first? Add the 10 to each side. See how easy this is? 10x is equal to 100. Divide each side by 10, and you get x is equal to 10. Well, let's see if it makes sense. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 minus 10 is 90. True. All right. Minus v minus 3 equals minus 9. Now negatives are starting to come in, and a lot of people get confused with negatives. Don't let them bother you. Add 3 to each side. Start off with the same process. Minus 9 plus 3 is minus 6. Minus v is what's left on the left-hand side. So then we'll just multiply by negative 1 on each side. These negatives will cancel. Negative times negative is positive. Negative times negative is a positive, so we'll get v equals 6. For this one, we're going to subtract the 13 from each side, leaving us with negative 2y is equal to 1. And then we divide by negative 2 which leaves us with y is equal to negative one half. Just because it's an odd, not a whole number or anything, don't assume that you're wrong. A right answer is a right answer, and all you have to do is plug it right in to find out if you're correct. Next one. Well, what have we been doing this whole time? Well, we subtract negative seven from each side to cancel those, right? And we're left with one half of r is equal to 12. If we Now, we have to multiply each side by two because 2 is really 2 over 1, which will cancel that 1 half, right? And we're left with 12 times 2, which is 24, or r equals 24. All right, bottom row. 2w equals minus 1 half plus 3 halves. Well, we add 1 half to each side. Just because they're fractions doesn't make any difference. It, you treat it the same exact way. 3 halves plus 1 half is 4 halves. 4 halves is 2. So we get 2w equals 2, and we divide by 2 on each side, and we get w equals 1. Here, I moved the place of the variable to the second one and made it negative, but it doesn't change anything. First, we're going to add the 13 to each side. We get 20, 32 is equal to negative g, and then you multiply negative 1 by each side to cancel out that negative in front of the variable. That becomes positive, and we get g is equal to negative 32. And in this one, 3 plus 4 is a little set up a little bit differently, but still, you're going to combine the like terms. You get 3 plus 4 is 7 negative 5t. Divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5, you get t is equal to negative 7 fifths. Thank you for watching this video on solving algebraic equations. If the two-step equations were a little bit difficult, don't worry, I'll have another video out shortly going into more detail on solving two-steps equations, but hopefully this immersed you into the topic fairly well. See you later.